Hey, what is up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan. And today, what in the heck are we gonna learn in this video? We are going to define acids and bases and distinguish between Arrhenius and Bronsted Lowry definitions. As always, let's take a quick moment and break that down. First thing we're gonna do is define an acid or base according to the Arrhenius or Bronsted Lowry definitions. Numero dos. We are going to identify what are called conjugate acid base pairs. All right, so let's dive right in. The first way that we are gonna define acids and bases is going to be using the Arrhenius, Arrhenius definition. Now, this system defines an acid as something that increases the hydrogen ion concentration in solution, or is known as a hydrogen ion donor. The Arrhenius definition of a base is going to be something that increases the hydroxide ion concentration, or something that donates hydroxide ions. And as you take a look at your screen, you're given an example of an Arrhenius acid, the HCl, and an example of the Arrhenius base sodium hydroxide. Again, note the Arrhenius acid has to have a hydrogen so that when we put it into solution, it can donate that hydrogen ion or increase the concentration of hydrogen ions in solution. Conversely, with an Arrhenius base, recognize that the sodium hydroxide is able to increase the concentration of hydroxide ions when put into solution or it's donating hydroxide ions. Now, a great way that I like to remember or distinguish between the definitions for an Arrhenius acid and base is remembering my good friend, Justin Bieber. Throwback to one of his first famous songs. Baby, 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 oh. I like to take a little spin on it. Bases, 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 oh. And if you're not scarred for life, hopefully you can remember the difference between an Arrhenius acid and an Arrhenius base. Now, before we move on, it's important to recognize that hydrogen ions are very attractive things. They're essentially a proton. And so when an Arrhenius acid donates a hydrogen ion to the solution, it's quickly picked up by a water molecule to form what we call hydronium or H3O plus. And it's really important that you recognize in this unit, we're gonna use hydrogen ion and hydronium ion interchangeably. One is simply referring to the hydrogen ion alone, and the other, hydronium, is referring to when water has already picked that hydrogen ion up. So, depending on whether you're using the hydrogen ion or the hydronium ion, you can see acids expressed one of two different ways. As you take a look at the first expression, here we're simply showing hydrochloric acid, or HCl, ionizing into the hydrogen ion and chloride ion. But you will also see it expressed in this second format. As we take a closer look at the second format, keep in mind that when you place hydrochloric acid in water, because that hydrogen ion is so attractive to the water, it is quickly picked up and forms hydronium. So again, two different expressions, and it's really, really important that you're comfortable with interchanging hydrogen ion and hydronium ion. They mean the same thing. All right, and that brings us to our second acid-base definition, and that's the Bronsted-Lowry definition. The Bronsted-Lowry system defines acids as proton donors. They're gonna donate hydrogen ions. Bases, on the other hand, are defined according to Bronsted-Lowry as proton acceptors, or things that will gain hydrogen ions. Now, the Bronsted-Lowry definition expands the very limited definition of Arrhenius bases to include the many bases that do not contain hydroxide ions. Okay, so a quick timeout. There are two big ways that you have to define acids and bases. The Arrhenius way and the Bronsted-Lowry way. One is not better than the other, just two different ways to define acids and bases. Keep in mind that the Arrhenius definition of an acid is something that donates hydrogen ions. Meanwhile, the Bronsted-Lowry definition of an acid is something that donates protons. Now, these are actually very similar slash identical definitions. Because guess what a hydrogen ion is? It's a proton. Let's throw back really quick to the good old days of chemistry when all we had to do was count protons, neutrons, and electrons. If you think about a neutral atom of hydrogen, it has one proton, no neutrons, and one electron. The hydrogen ion is simply the neutral hydrogen atom without its electron. In other words, 
it's a proton. As we think about bases, here's where we really begin to differentiate between the two definitions. The readiest definition of a base is something that donates hydroxide ions, whereas the Bronsted-Lowry definition is a much broader definition, and it classifies anything that accepts protons or hydrogen ions as a base. Okay, now let's take a closer look at the Bronsted-Lowry definition. One of the big advantages of Bronsted-Lowry definitions of acids and bases is that it allows us to better understand reversible reactions which we'll talk about in a little bit. For example, as you look at the original equation that you see on your screen, in the forward direction, we can think of this acid donating its hydrogen ion to this other compound. However, we can also think about the reverse reaction. Again, this time, we've got this compound HB that is acting as an acid in the reverse direction, donating its hydrogen ion back to this compound. And again, we'll talk a lot more about the importance of reversible reactions in a little bit. All right, and this brings us to one of the most important concepts you need to understand for Bronsted-Lowry theory of acids and bases. Now that we know that a Bronsted-Lowry acid is something that donates a proton, and a Bronsted-Lowry base is something that accepts a proton, we can create what are called Bronsted-Lowry conjugate acid-base pairs. Now, an acid and conjugate base pair simply differ by the presence of a hydrogen ion. So let's take a look at the first example you have in your notes. We've got some sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and we're placing it in water to form the hydrogen sulfate ion and hydronium. As you think about this reaction, recognize that the sulfuric acid is acting as a proton donor or a hydrogen ion donor. Its conjugate base pair is what's left over after the proton has been donated in this case, the HSO4 minus. So that is an example of a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base conjugate pair. Their formulas will simply differ by a hydrogen ion. This equation has a second conjugate acid-base pair. The water is acting as a base. It's acting as a proton acceptor. Its conjugate acid, or what forms is after the proton is accepted, is H3O plus. So in this example, we have two conjugate acid-base pairs. The sulfuric acid and hydrogen sulfate ion make one conjugate pair, and water and hydronium make the second conjugate pair. Again, keep in mind that a conjugate acid-base pair simply differ by the presence of one hydrogen ion. All right, let's take a quick look at a second example here. In this case, we have ammonia, NH3, added to water to form the ammonium ion and hydroxide ion. Now, as we think about this reaction, Recognize that in this example, the water is acting as an acid. It's acting as a proton donor. Its conjugate pair, or what's left after the proton has been donated, is the hydroxide ion. The second conjugate pair in this reaction, we've got ammonia acting as a base, or a proton acceptor. Its conjugate pair, or what forms after it has accepted the proton, is going to be the ammonium ion. So again, we have two conjugate pairs and they will simply differ by the presence of one hydrogen ion. And the last tidbit of information is simply to recognize there are a couple of things that can act as either an acid or a base, depending on what they're mixed with. We call those things amphiprotic or amphoteric. They are things that can both donate a proton and accept a proton. Now, water is an excellent example, but there's also some anions of weak acids that will be amphoteric. Keep in mind, in order for something to be amphoteric, it has to at least have a hydrogen ion to donate to act as an acid. And generally, it has to have a lone pair of electrons to accept a hydrogen ion and act as a base. Okay, and that does it to your introduction to the definitions of acids and bases. Have a fantastic day.